Are you looking for an SUV with a sports sedan mentality? Well, look no further than this 2020 Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Today we have the Stelvio TI Sport with some options and it's actually been updated for 2020. We're gonna take a full detailed look at everything on the outside, the inside, and of course, go for a test drive. Let's get started. Now I wanna start things off under the hood with the powertrain. So the Stelvio and the Stelvio TI both get the same direct injected twin scroll turbocharged engines. It's a two liter engine, 280 horsepower, 306 pound feet of torque that comes out at 2000 RPM. It's paired with an eight speed automatic transmission. It is rear wheel drive based, but you can get optional all wheel drive, which is what we have. And that can send 60% of the torque to the front wheels. And this powertrain, even though it's on this TI and the base model, it is still quick at 5.4 seconds, zero to 60. Miles per gallon isn't fantastic, but considering how quick this is, it's not bad at 22 in the city and 28 on the highway for all wheel drive. And you can tow up to 3000 pounds. One of the biggest things that helps the Alfa Romeo's performance is the weight distribution between the front and the back of the vehicle. And as you can see, this engine is pulled back quite a bit. But the fun part of the Alfa Romeo Stelvio is the Quadrifolio model. That one gets a port and direct injected twin turbocharged 2.9 liter V6 with 505 horsepower and 443 pound feet of torque. It goes zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds and it is the fastest SUV around the Nürburgring that you can buy in the US. Now as we take a look at the exterior for trim levels, we get the base Stelvio, then the Stelvio Sport, TI, TI Sport, Lusso, Sport Carbon, and then top end Quadrifolio. Today we have the TI Sport with special edition Nero Edizione package, if I said that right. Lots of extras on the outside and this Stelvio is updated a little bit for 2020 in different regards. So as we start right up front, we get LED daytime running lights. I really like the, the shape of that lighting. It looks pretty menacing at night. You actually get bi-xenon headlights. So these are not full LEDs, they're by Xenon, but they do a very good job at night as well. And they are also adaptive. And I have a night review showing these off, so be sure to check that out. And then of course you get that triangular grill, kind of that shield grill. It has a dark surround on our model. We also have parking sensors and the whole radar system. And you get this splitter on the front end. So unlike before, it was a little bit more plain up front, but this splitter really gives it a lot of aggression, if you ask me. And this is the alpha white color. So it's not sparkly, it's not ivory, it is just pure white, but it is bold and it looks great with all the dark accents on this Stelvio. The Stelvio is gonna give us 20 inch black wheels. These are only on this Nero Edizion package and you get custom painted calipers. You can get red, black, or yellow. Fourth piston Brembo breaks up front, single piston in the rear, and of course the Quadrifolio bumps that up even more. Dimensionally, the Stelvio looks good. It's fairly compact, but not as small as some, but not as big as others. It's 185 inches long, so it's kind of right in the middle. 8.1 inches of ground clearance. Part of our packaging gives us these black mirrors. You also get those indicators on the side, and we have automatic dimming function, heating function, and power folding with those mirrors on both sides, which is fantastic. Plus, you can see the dark surround on the windows, even the dark roof rails up at the top. So this white and dark, all the contrast, I think it looks really good on this Stelvio. Now Alfa Romeo has a patented Alpha Link rear suspension setup for optimal handling, and that is no joke. It's got a great weight ratio from front to back, a carbon fiber drive shaft helps out with that. Plus we have the Sport Performance Package which gives us an active suspension and limited slip rear differential. And then as we go ahead and get to the back, just look how steep that rake is on the back window. That is part of what cuts into the cargo space, but you do get LED taillights right here. They have a pretty unique design, almost similar to the front end. You've got all wheel drive with that Q4, black Stelvio badge, that black valence in the back, and these black exhaust tips. The Stelvio also has rear fog lights. So that's what you get right there. So if it's real dark, those are gonna be extra bright, or if it's real foggy, those will be extra bright so people can see you better. One of the sacrifices of owning a Stelvio is the practicality with its cargo area and its back seat, but they make up for it. Let me show you. So you can get a power lift gate standard, but you can get this hands-free lift gate optional for $300. And behind the second row, you're not gonna find a lot of space. It's 18 and a half cubic feet, but it really accommodates more than you'd expect. 
Now let me show you a closer look at this cargo area. So first of all, one thing that is really awesome, on both sides you get these movable tie downs. So check it out. You have a tie down and you can move it to different spots. So you can do that on both sides if you want to tie some stuff down back here. Push that button to release it and then you're good to go. So I really like that idea of being able to tie stuff down back here. People probably won't use it, but you get a little storage bin right there. You got a little hook right there on each side, a light on each side as well, plus a 12 volt power outlet. And down above that storage area, you get a 115 volt three prong outlet. I also like this cargo cover. It is sleek and small, works well. And there's also a cargo cover up on that glass. Underneath of there, a spare tire is optional, but we don't have it. We have a tire inflator kit. It is a 40, 20, 40 split for the back seat. But if you pull the tab to lower the seat, it doesn't actually lower it. It just pops it loose and you have to reach forward to kind of push it. And even when I have my seat where I normally have it, it still doesn't fold down. But once you get it all folded down, you have 56 and a half cubic feet and a pretty flat load floor. So you do have some practicality with the Stelvio, although not as much space as some competitors. And the cool thing about the hands-free lift gate is not only does it open it for you, but it also closes it for you. So if you got your hands full, putting something in or taking something out, you're good to go. One of the updates for 2020 on this Alfa Romeo Stelvio is that you now have automatic emergency braking standard on all trims. Plus the Stelvio also has level two autonomous driving. So you've got full stop and go with your radar cruise control. You've got a complete lane keeping system that's gonna keep you centered in your lane as well. And to boot, you've got standard front and rear parking sonar and blind spot indicators. You get Stelvio's smart key system standard with push button start, Alfa Romeo on the back, remote start as well. You can open up your rear lift gate. This is a large key fob, so that's probably the only downfall. I mean, that could be good or bad depending on who you are. And the way it works with the Stelvio is there's a sensor in the back and then the mirror will flash and then you just press that button to lock it and then you're good to go. As you hop into the Stelvio and you start it up, our particular model has the entry exit system. So the seat's gonna move forward right to where you want it because we have memory settings. Typically, uh, you'll, typically you'll get basic power leather seats, but in our particular model, we've got these sport power adjustable seats. They're leather with four-way lumbar support, including bolster adjustment, manual thigh extension adjustment. They're heated with memory settings. They're just not ventilated at this price point, which is a bummer. These seats are quite comfortable though. They're very, sporty they got this red leather they got massive bolstering on them you got the alfa romeo logo on them they're perforated overall these seats look very nice they feel very nice my only complaint is that i kind of got big thighs for somebody my size and the bolstering on the seat is a little bit narrow so i'm just a little bit squeezed with my thighs the cool thing about these seats is the bolster adjustment so you can squeeze yourself in here a little more for some even more spirited driving and the steering wheel is even updated. I'll show you this in a second. It's leather wrapped and it's heated and it's got a pretty good range of motion, although it is manual adjustable. I'm five foot nine and overall it is kind of a cocoon like tight interior, but headroom is good. Leg room is pretty good. Uh, the center console is kind of big, but I'll show you that in a second. As you look at the rest of the interior for the Stelvio, you have some new and enhanced touch points for an improved interior overall. We even have the optional leather dash and door trim to make this a more of a premium fuel, but it still is pretty sporty in here. So starting out over on the door, you have this nice soft leather up above, like I said, with the stitching, the accent pieces, memory settings for your doors right there. All one touch automatic windows, soft here, soft here decent size armrest, bottle holder, and storage cubby. Right in front of us, Alpha gives us an updated steering wheel. So it is thicker, it has softer leather. You still have these sport grips on here. A little bit of a flat bottom right there. You've got controls for your uh, cruise control settings and your driver, your traffic jam assist, highway driving, uh, information controls, or excuse me, volume and radio controls, and your voice controls. The stop start button is actually right here. And you get these massive paddle shifters. So these are completely detached from the wheel. They feel really nice, they're metal. We'll use those in the test drive. You also get rain sensing windshield wipers. And the way that you scroll through your information display is by pushing the button at the end of that stock. So that's how you change all of this stuff. So this is the standard setup with the physical gauge on the left and the right and that digital display in the middle. 
On the first screen, this does show you a decent amount of information. You can see an instantaneous fuel economy down at the bottom, as well as your range left and the speed. And then right up above, you can see you can see the the speed limit sign. Um, you can see when you have like your adaptive cruise and lane keeping system going, that'll show up up there. Trip A and trip B. If you want trip B, you can choose that or not. An efficiency gauge. And then this is where you can see all your driver assist features when you're in your level two autonomous driving. Up above is our leather dash. Has a nice feel to it. It looks good as well. Same with the trim pieces and more of the red leather in here and just the red material overall. So kind of tucked under that dash, Alpha gives you an updated and now standard 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen. It can also be controlled with a dial, which is what I am doing right now. So on your home screen, this is what you have. You have all of these different sections. You can scroll through your maps, driver assistance, you can see your climate, even performance stuff on here, uh, tons of vehicle information. So there's a lot of customizable stuff uh, in terms of your screen, as well as what you can, what you choose that you want to see in different settings. You can control everything with the dial and if you want, you can even just touch the screen as well. So it's nice that you have the option to use a dial or touch the screen. The dial is right here. It has a nice feel to it. This whole center console is updated. I'll show you in a second. Home button and brightness. I wish there was a quick like music shortcut or a quick map shortcut, uh, but you can kind of customize different shortcuts with this dial. This system also has the optional 900 watt 14 speaker Harman Kardon system, which sounds really nice. It actually bumps in here quite well. Got a little Harman Kardon uh, tweeter up over there, and it just sounds great in the Stelvio with no rattles. Got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and then one bummer is that you have a basic backup camera. There's no surround view camera at this price point, and it's a small backup camera. So you have your front and rear parking sensors there, but then you have a small backup camera in there. Just below that, we have some more soft material, but then you've got dual zone climate control. So you've got your driver and your passenger, pretty simple setup. I do have one complaint with that though, is that I've had it on auto almost all the time, 75, 76, and it seems like it always is working more than I would want it to be. But aside from that, you've got a USB charging port, you've got a 12 volt power outlet, You've got a couple of cup holders. Now, with luxury cars and with aesthetics, it's not always practical where the cup holders go. You can move this little tray to cover it up if you want, but it does block your controls if you have something there. Alpha gave us a new shifter, so it is a stationary shifter. You just got a little trigger on the back, push the button for park, pull down into drive, pretty simple to use. Electronic parking brake, and this whole center console is updated. So. We've got nice material like this knurled metal around here. You've got a rubber liner around your drive mode and your volume knob over here. And it just, it looks nice. It's clean. It just takes up a lot of space. So your drive mode selection, D and A, that's kind of cool. D is for dynamic, basically a sport mode, natural, more of a comfort, uh, normal mode. And then A is for ev advanced efficiency, like an eco mode. And then when you're in dynamic mode, you can push this button to actually soften your suspension. One more little thing that I like is that there's actually a little key holder right there. So that works great. Alpha also gives you a new phone holder. So if you want, you can get wireless charging right here, which we have. And then there are a couple of USB ports, a type A and a type C and an auxiliary port here. And it's a decent little storage area, although it is pretty small. And this armrest is fairly soft, although it doesn't slide forward and backwards, but it's in a good spot. Alpha gives you an automatic dimming mirror and garage controls up on that rear view mirror. And then right up above, we have the optional dual pane sunroof. So our version, our front part opens up and then you have that rear part that closes or that stays closed. And then we have this sliding um, cover. It's not a completely solid, it is transparent, but when it's real hot, I feel like a little bit of light still filters through Maybe it's just my imagination. A quick look at visibility. You've got a dark headliner going out the side. And because of the looks and the body style of the Stelvio, you get a pretty large blind spot back there and a really small back window. And at night, you get some ambient lighting. It's not a colorful, vibrant ambient lighting, but it got white lights in different areas and backlit buttons and charging ports.
When you take a quick look at the back seats, this is where you start to sacrifice a little bit in terms of practicality for an SUV. The back seat legroom is kind of tight. I can still sit behind myself and have enough foot space and enough knee space, but it is tighter than most. You do get a fold down center armrest, which is nice with a couple of cup holders and some padding. Plus you've got this dual pane sunroof right up above. So that kind of helps to give you a little bit more of an open airy feel back here. These back seats are still fairly comfortable though. They got this nice red leather, still perforated. They're not quite as bolstered as the front seats though. And then as a bonus, we've got AC vents back here, a couple USB charging ports and a little storage cubby. And if you want, you can option up to get these outboard seats heated. And one plus, I'd expect it, but not everybody does it you still get the same nice material back on these doors and the armrest that you do up front. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get rolling in this Stelvio. So in this test drive, I'm gonna tell you what it's like to live with the Stelvio, daily drive, uh, the acceleration, braking, how everything feels, put it in the drive modes, and uh, just kind of hopefully give you a feel of what it's like to drive the Stelvio with this point of view test drive. So. First impressions of the Stelvio, I've never driven an Alfa Romeo at all, and I've heard all about the handling, and I've gotta say, it is totally true. The handling in here is great, even though this isn't the performance model, Quadrifoglio, even with this base engine, the lower trim engine, it still does a really nice job. The handling is good. You can definitely tell the Alfa Romeo focuses on that stuff. One little nitpick is the blinkers. The stock doesn't actually move and stick. You move it and it goes right back to center. Uh, so you can still do the three blinker thing or get it to hold, but I just don't like that. Now, just in normal mode, just a little bit of acceleration. And it's quick getting itself up to speed. The Stelvio has a pretty good ride comfort. Um, it's certainly not the most plush, but that's not what it's going for. You've got good handling, you've got comfortable enough ride. Um, we do have good sized wheels on here, so that could take away a little bit from that. The handling, just the way the steering feels, even in normal mode, it's technically a comfort setting on steering, is very crisp and responsive, so that's fantastic. It does have the level two autonomous driving. When you get out on the interstate, uh, it'll let you know when you're locked in on your lanes, it's gonna steer for you. The adaptive cruise is pretty much seamless, but let's go ahead and just see how these corners feel. It just handles so well. The body control is great. This car has a great weight ratio and balance. It's just perfect. It just makes it fun to drive. So if you want an SUV that's fun to drive, feels like a sedan, this is what you this is what you would want. This gives you everything you want in terms of handling and performance. Drive mode button is down here. I'm gonna put it in the D for dynamic of DNA. You can see all that on the main screen. Get on it in just a second. But I mean, you can really hustle this around some corners. I don't even have the luxury of finding roads like that, but pedal down. And then it holds those RPMs. So if you want to get on it again, it goes. And the turbo is quick. There is some lag right away in the beginning bands of that turbo, but the transmission has been crisp and quick. I haven't had any issues with that. The braking, on the other hand, is not my favorite. It is a little bit touchy. It does a good job, but it is touchy. And the car is quick. 5.4 seconds, zero to 60, still holding the RPMs. When you push the pedal down, there is a stopping point, and then if you push a little past that, then you really unleash it. But even without pedal down, like right here, car is quick it goes it sounds nice and it gets moving right away go ahead and put it back in natural mode or comfort mode and right there we hit a pretty decent bump and you feel it but it's not like it really gets you upset in this cabin definitely gotta say the biggest takeaway with the Stelvio is the way that it handles 
you get in here and you just want to drive. You just want to go for a drive. You want to go around some corners. You want to handle. It puts you in a mood that most SUVs don't. One thing Alfa Romeo improved on is we have laminated glass. It should be a quieter cabin. The NVH should be improved. Um, my decibel ratings on highway and interstate speeds were quite good. Uh, this is definitely quieter than I expected, especially for being a sportier type of vehicle. I don't know about the Quadrifoglio, but road noise is good. There is a little bit of wind noise present at times, a little bit of road noise, but it is certainly not bad and it is still quiet. In terms of daily driving, it's been fun. Like I said, it's comfortable enough, handles so well, kind of gets you in the mood, in the spirit to want to drive and just enjoy driving. And that's why you would get this. You're not gonna get this because practicality and space is your top priority. You're gonna get this because you want the fun factor. Let's go ahead and get pedaled down one more time. Now I have it in manual mode. Those pedals are actually really quick. And the thing about it is with our turbo here, our red line is actually 5,500 RPM, so it comes up on you pretty quick. But it is responsive. We're holding fourth gear in manual mode. Let's go ahead and downshift. Very crisp. Man, those pedals are, those paddles are quick. Gets you up to speed so fast. I haven't hardly even used these paddles, but dang, I wish I would have. In fourth gear, downshift, third, second. Dang, those are just quick and fun. If you drive a Stelvio, use those paddles. You will be surprised. But hope you all have enjoyed this test drive. Let's go ahead and start to wrap things up. So to wrap things up on this 2020 Alfa Romeo Stelvio TI Sport with a lot of options, this is definitely still super fun. It has the aggressive looks to match. Like I said before, it's literally like a sports sedan trapped in an SUV body. And if the driving dynamics, the attitude, the mentality of this type of a vehicle is what you're looking for and what you favor, this is perfect for you. If you're looking for something more practical like an actual SUV, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. Hope you enjoyed this video of the 2020 Stelvio. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe for weekly reviews and watch some of these other videos. Have a great rest of your day.